वेलकम In today's episode me and Brandon talk about the male and female archetypes and we talk about where they excel but also the distortions that the mind and ego imprinted on them these dual archetypes go beyond biology go beyond the form and the body and i think more of them like qualities of reality and what it means to be at ease with life really It was such a fascinating talk to me. I hope you stick around and let me know what you think. Also, if nature, well-being and art is of your enjoyment, please come check the daily content we post at oaktype.com. Without further ado, here's the episode. See you around. Do you have anything in mind? You're probably going to say no. <laughs> oh man. Uh I wish I had taken No, I don't. <laughs> we got to we got to get it together. <laughs> I thought about a little something that I've read you say which was uh something along the lines of uh male friendships or or something like that 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 you've said a couple days ago. Do you recall what I what I'm talking about? Um Vaguely, that was a couple, that was like last week, right? And I was talking about um, having uh, male friendships. Mm. Where, oh, I was talking about the masculine, where men's uh, blah, blah, blah. I got it. I was talking about how um, modern, it's probably particularly in the West, uh, men don't have they may, they may be restricted in the outlets they have for being vulnerable and being expressive and that a lot of times um <clears throat> they you know you spend most of your time at work and the you know your work relationships can be kind of real surface so you're not going to really cover any ground there um your friendships are like you know you might not have they might not if your male friendships might not have that space too it depends on that mm-hmm. um cuz they might be more around activities or around um there just might not be that open channel to be vulnerable uh and then that leaves a lot of men in a position where they're they're looking for their partner their romantic partner to fill that whole space for them because it, it might be the only outlet for them the question is do you think that this is exclusive to men do you think that women don't d- deep down they they also they might be more spontaneous and all that But do you think they have an easy, easier time just to uh pour their hearts out? Now, <laughs> this is of course just my own generalization. <clears throat> and I uh I would if you'll allow me this this broad brush, I will paint. So what I would say is that for women it's a little bit easier because they're they're the archetypes we have for women involve this this open, warm emotional thing and 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 female friendships are places where they come to expose themselves and talk about their feelings and and have that's long true. conversations about that not all of course not all of them but in general you can say that's more of a space that they're they're allowed um to occupy whereas and I can only speak I can speak for myself at least growing up there was a lot of like what you were allowed to do <laughs> as a guy i was constantly being told you know men don't do that guys don't do that um you know buck up <laughs> you know um it's it's real like there's not that space to once you get to a certain age you're not really there's no space for you to cry or have emotional outbursts you're supposed to be in control and and you know <laughs> uh it, it can get i think it can get harder for guys um Cause like you said there's there's a the male archetype we have is is very you know I would say stoic and strong and 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 logical and and um controlled you know mm. and I would imagine that's a good image to have uh like when we were you know as humanity was developing when you could have more um ragey <laughs> uh, explosive yeah. and uh more impulsive actions the to have an archetype of a guy, a man being in control of all of that uh that would be great but um you know 
when we have that image and we're living under it, then it becomes like a cage and it's restrictive. So you, you're being you're being told how how that happens. So anyway, to answer your question, <laughs> I, I think I think women I think for women it is easier um, for them to be expressive and it, and for almost to this extent that I would say most men don't even really might not even know that's a need that they want <laughs> to like. It's just it's just such it's not even in their field. Like you try to if you try to talk to them about their feelings, they would probably not even understand how to go about doing that. Mm. What? <laughs> I'm fine. <Yeah. laughs> what? You ask a guy, how are you doing? I'm good. You ask a girl, she's like, oh my god, let me tell you. And she's like, she <laughs> yeah. <knows> she. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um one thing <clears throat> to take uh of your concept of archetypes that make a lot of sense to me is that like the, the archetypal um let's let's say strength of man there, there's this image archetypal image of strength is a bit um violated in the sense that uh i find that the strength the real strength comes from from this uh willingness to expose oneself and and not as a not as a a, co a cover that we wear which which is the the strength or, or the archetypal strength that we that we represent nowadays we have these uh ego these this co co cover uh on our personality that you know could very well present a sense of strength but but the strength that i find in my own explorations that is really valuable and and as that if you will masculine aspect to it is the is the strength of no fear and that means no fear in all situations that means no fear in in crying no fear in hmm. in being emotional and i i felt that i feel that that archetypal um characteristic was uh was corrupted along the time. Do do you feel that? Yeah, I agree. Um, <clears throat> I think that's just what happens when you, when we kind of have this mirror image of ourselves, these ideas, and it's kind of becomes caricature because when, the more we say, okay, that's what it is, <laughs> the more we define it, the, the, the stronger that idea of the, of the barrier along that, then, um, Instead of being the expression of that, we're living, we're trying to imitate the expression of what we think it is. And so it's, it kind of locks you in. And then those, image, those images get distorted. The more we believe in them, the more we solidify them, the more distorted they are. Because the, the, more, sure, the more sure we're insisting that it is this way, you know, then we're, we're saying it isn't. The more mm. we're saying it isn't these other ways. And so the image gets more and more distorted because it becomes less inclusive. So yeah. Um, I think it, I think, I think I was, the, the word that comes to mind for me is caricature. So it, it comes, it becomes distorted. Like, like, yeah, raw, you know, <laughs> there's this big image of, of what a man is and, and, and how that's supposed to feel. And I would even venture to say, um, we might be looking for some new kind of role models in, in the future about like what positive, strong, masculine energy, what it can look like. Uh, yeah. Uh, and I think we're kind of, I, I would even go to say that we're exploring that now. Although people will, um, some people are upset about that and they think they're trying to get rid of the man and soften him up. Um, mm. But what I, I would, I think that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> or yeah, <laughs> that's, that's not, that's definitely um, happening. And it's such a, for me at least, it's such a, um, by the nature of the of the topic, it's such a art thing to speak about that. Yeah, I I don't even want to want to go there, but I guess um, like going going again back to the archetype to the male archetype. There's this aspect of strength of of fierceness. So what's what's the contrast to that in terms? Of what what's the feminine archetype that you'd say? Well, when I think of the male and the female, like the male's the arrow, so they're they're very like 
just in yeah. there going to get it and make it happen and the the, the female energy their their power is in their 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 creativity the receptiveness the the openness um it's kind of like it's it's kind of like just exactly the opposite energy they or if men have if men have i'm trying to find the opposite of power because it's not that they have a lack of power right um this this strength uh if it, the man, if for the masculine energy, it's in the strength of their ability to accomplish things and make things happen. And for women, it would be in the strength of the, uh, maybe perhaps in the, sh- the strength of their emotions, the, the their ability to, to have that openness and that vulnerability and that creativity and all that um, mm. receptiveness. That That's the, their power. Let's say that we have established that the corruption of the male archetype is, is this front of of strength which which certainly t- to myself was uh, a layer of of protecting myself protecting from deeper uh recognitions and deeper forms of expression so what would be the the corruption of that sense of openness from the um, the female archetype what would you say um i would say for women the corruption we see is different. It's because our society is very male oriented. All the rules were made by the men, so it's very of mm. men. It's a very con- that an energy that the female energy is actually. Women may feel pressure to show up more masculine, in in mm. response. So they're actually moving out of their their element and into the male element because they're trying to show up like if if our what we've said is powerful and what that looks like and and you know we're looking for raw and strength and assertiveness and 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 you know <laughs> uh, yeah heavy fist tactics i don't know what you call it all that kind of raw energy that's what I, I feel it more than i can say it but anyway if we're looking for that um then the and we're saying that's what that's what it looks like then the women are feeling the pressure to show up that way to to be more masculine in their expression so of course it's still coming through a fe- a, a female form so it, it looks different but they're they're being they're they're leaning more more masculine right yeah yeah um, that makes perfect sense yeah right so i think that's kind of the the distorted the i don't know what it what the distortion of that would be maybe the the ideas we have of it um probably yeah the, the ideas of what what is for instance the role of, of of a woman is that what you're yeah i would like the the females to probably write their own archetype because i imagine yeah. the one we have was 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 created by the men looking at the women yeah. you know saying that this is how they are so i'd like maybe some maybe to have some more female input what is it like over there <laughs> what's uh what's the energy like for them you know i mean with this talk what comes to mind is that also uh because we are i think i feel we are more on the surface in the sense that when I think of these things, I try to go beyond the form or biology. Yeah, yeah. So uh, ideally, I guess there, there, there's obviously the the print of biology, and that, and that is um, that cannot be neglected, neglected because it's uh, it's immediate. Um, you know, there's there's a brain with the uh, right kind of chemicals that do. Uh, that make you behave a certain way, but to go deeper on that, there's these. Ideally, there's this uh, union of both the feminine and the masculine within any any yeah. body, right? Yeah. Do you think that, for instance, I was born a biological male? Do you think that if I wanted to achieve like fifty fifty percent on the uh, archetypes between male and female? that wouldn't be impossible because of my of my nature as a as a body no not at all i i think the mistake would be to think that you're a male so you're 100 percent male energy and then there's a woman and she's 100 percent female energy i think that you're both like every every man or woman has some combination of the male and female energy uh or dynamic in them at different varying levels and you know what's what's balanced and harmonious to you may be different to someone else you know um Mm. i think we all have that within us i i this is a really interesting i'm so glad you asked me about this because i i think about it too as a um as a as a gay man it's a little bit different i grew up feeling a little bit off so i'm very aware of 
the feminine aspect and the the male aspect. And I especially mm. encounter it when I am when I come when I'm around m- more masculine energy i feel my feminine energy more oh, i'm you, made aware you feel of it. more yeah okay <laughs> yeah like you feel instant- more of the contrast in, in-, in that type of environment yeah. yeah i feel the contrast instantly and when i'm around women i feel more masculine so i feel for me i, I always feel at odds <laughs> whenever yeah. i encounter the, the different archetypes i it seems to flip the other one for me so i feel i feel more of the other energy so i i think so I think that that dynamic is in everybody and I would be curious to see, okay, you talk, you're talking about balance. Well, I think people would have to allow, can you allow that, that expression within yourself? So you're, if you're, if you're channeling all the, the, the male energy, all the masculine energy, and you're neglecting those feminine aspects of yourself, you'd have to allow that energy to present. You'd have to, um, to, to be in touch with it and in tune with it. And then you could, you could kind of get your balance more. But I, I don't think um, I don't think we would all just come out into some blobby neutral. It would be very different. Your your balance. Somebody's might be you know sixty five masculine, and then the rest feminine, yeah. or some some. It could be also it'd be all over the place, and that would be their balance. That's that's their 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 balance of the energy. I don't yeah, think it's so, you know. Yeah, I, I'm so glad that you bring that you uh, that you mentioned your own. Um, anecdote on that because I-, I want to ask you if you have felt uh that you had to you know uh that you felt constricted among men because myself in the last years because i was so sensitive i didn't really feel a a tease among men because i uh, there was a lot of sensi- 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 sensitivity and you know tying that to a, a feminine archetype, I felt that that dissonance among men. Do, do you ever felt you needed to, you know, grow that, that side of you to feel a, a tease among men? Yeah, like, um, especially growing up, you, I, would, I would try to lean into it. You know, I'm trying to amp that to, to be more in that expression because I'm trying to model my peers and I'm trying to show up that way, but... I don't know, you know, you just don't, you, they can tell, you know, they sniff you out. <laughs> and so they, there's something you're not, you're not channeling it right or something. Cause they, that energy is real hierarchical. So yeah. you, you end up at the low end of that. I bet. Um, yeah. It, it does feel like it, feel, it did feel like I, I did feel like I had to, I do try to chant. I would try, I would back in the day, I would try to lean more that way, but eventually, um, I kind of just didn't care. Like, okay, whatever. Exactly. <laughs> you know, like that, that was a whole journey for me was in finding and being okay with my own balance. Cause in the beginning I, I felt like I had to show up a certain way. And so I'm very aware of this, this, these different kinds of energies because they come up differently for me. And so in the beginning, mm-hmm. yeah, I was, it was hardcore. Like I'm trying to show up that way and I feel very doodly. So I can imagine that for different people, it feels all sorts of different ways, but I feel internally very doodly, although I see myself and my expression may not always be such, <laughs> but it feels that way. And I identify that way. Um, but I, I also have very feminine aspects that are show up that I am in touch with that I very much enjoy. So now I feel more free to play with those energies and have them come through and express. And sometimes I do feel really feminine. And then I'm okay with that. Now that was a whole thing. Uh, and then other times I feel more masculine, but before I felt very restricted. Like I needed to be this way. I need to show up this way. I got to sound this way. I got to um, move a certain kind of way, talk a certain kind of way, be interested, you know, all, mm. this, uh, all this other kind of stuff. Yeah. I felt very growing up. I felt pretty restricted by the archetype uh, or the idea about like what a man is. And I used to always, I used to often say, well, I'm a guy and I'm doing it. So, <laughs> like, I don't know what you mean. Like, you know, men can't do that. Men don't do that. Well, I'm doing it, and I'm a dude. So, <laughs> do do you think there's a, a significant difference from a young gay man growing today compared to your you growing up? Yeah, man. I think it's it's been a lot progressive, and each each generation is a little bit easier. Probably not to say it's super easy. I don't know what the I'm out of touch with the the current childlike climate. Mm. Um. But there's certainly, there's more models for it. I know when I was growing up, there wasn't anything, like, 
it wasn't where would you see it at you wouldn't see it on tv or anything so you know you feel like so alone like an outsider because you you have this weird feeling going on everything everyone's telling you it's supposed to be this way you're seeing all these examples and then like you're not feeling that and you're not understanding why um i think being able to I think that's why they say representation matters. Like it's when you get to see that you can see yourself somewhere. It's like, okay, I'm not alone. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And I think those ideas are becoming more well-known, more spread out. Like, Oh, Hey, sometimes people are this way and that's okay. So I think, I think it is, I would say it's definitely easier. Um, Not that it is easy, um, but it's certainly easier than when I was growing up, I would say, um, and and I personally am in a, a couple different intersections, uh, being black and and such. So yeah, the dynamic is different all culturally and all that other stuff. And I think all those those things are expanding as we as as we are here. It is again the internet connecting all of us as 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 we're all connected. All these ideas are are being more explored more rapidly. So I think we're I think it is it is getting easier. I would say, but you know, there's still a lot of ways to go. <laughs> I, uh, of course, absolutely. One thing that um, came to mind uh, earlier in my life, like in my adolescent years, was that you know it was um, it was very frequent uh, over a year where I live for my peers to make fun of uh, f- feminine type of guys or. Um, all that kind of stuff, and I f- felt very fortunate because I saw the, um, I saw kind of their karma playing out in the sense that I never deep in my deep in my soul I never felt um, that a black man or um, or a gay man or whatever it is that is uh, considered uh, a normal by by those peers that. I, I grew up with I never felt that that we deep within me and at the same time I saw that if I was born in one of their households I'm I, I might have been that the racist or, or the you know and I felt very fortunate fortunate at that time and um because it's just it's just uh just a matter of luck where where you were born or your parents teach you yeah it's uh at at the end of the day you cannot blame anyone yeah Uh, yeah (laughs) absolutely so i'm trying to understand are you saying like you feel like you're you didn't have that kind of pressure in your own household so you didn't have those kind of i mean i i I did when 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 there were those times that that my friends made fun of minorities um i Deep down, I didn't feel that there was a difference, so I, I didn't need to make fun of them myself. So, but I could see that the separation um, comes essentially for from the from the parents or 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 even the medium that they are they are born with. Yeah. But um, I'm sorry. What was your question? No, then? I think you answered it. Actually, I was asking about <laughs> uh, your, if you felt that your own um your own upbringing wasn't wasn't giving you that kind of pressure to to do those things or or that kind of um, yeah because i my parents never you know i i feel that the most the most um the way to learn as you grow up is not by exactly what your parents tell you but how they behave Mm -hmm. when you are near them and i never noticed any difference when they were engaging with minorities, even even though we are from a small town where that kind of abuse uh, tends to be more noticeable, I never I never grew up in that kind of environment, so I I never you know learned uh, that that kind of behavior. I have another question for you. Um, do so. Did you, when you were growing up, so this is interesting to me, did you feel, did you feel that you were able to, um, did you feel like you were able to express your inner world and your inner feeling? Or did you feel, was that something you had to connect with? Because to me, you feel very, you seem very sensitive in that sense, not sensitive, like uh, 
soft or whatever, but sensitive is in the sense of being aware of your senses. Yeah. Um, you're very sensitive to your feeling and, and yeah. what's happening with you. So is that something that you had to connect to and explore later in life? Or did you always feel like you had room to do that? Or were you trying to uphold that image more when you were younger? No, absolutely not. I That was a process that has been more uh, done more recently because that sensitivity was j- just like, you know, to, to conti- continue on that ex- example of, you know, my my friends in my childhood making fun of minorities. I, I always felt so uh, impacted by that, you know, when, when people were made fun of, it, it always hurted me a lot. So that kind of process to deal with all these emotions that I felt very overwhelming, I, I couldn't, I, I, I didn't know how to deal with that on 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 an early age so that was a process that uh is still ongoing and was definitely more cared for in these later years of my life yeah that makes i feel like that makes a lot of sense with how i experienced growing up and then you know um i wonder for i would like to say that i think I think it's good for us to explore that that feminine aspect within the the male inner the man the, the a straight man should be in touch with those aspects of himself because like um so that he can still feel masculine while that stuff is appearing within him so Absolutely. in that way he's able to fully explore himself but if you're if you have parts of yourself that you are disallowing or refusing to acknowledge or you're trying to like oh that shouldn't be here and you're trying to crush it then um you're not open to the the fullness of who you are and 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 i think that that disconnection it causes all sorts of issues right absolutely Um, i mean in my own case i can attest to that because you know in these past couple of years there were some you know i I, i've uh, i frequently talk about this which is that these experiences that I have of intensity, intense feelings and all that, in which I have to, you know, drop everything that I'm doing and attend to that and just sit with it. So uh, all that ties to that is I I always felt that I needed to cry to for there to be some sort of physical hmm. relief of those feelings. Wow. And there was a such a primal blockage of that, you know, um twisted male archetypal thing going on that I was on the verge of crying and and like the fountain would shut and I I couldn't cry. And I felt that that release would always be um avoided in some way wow this male ego these these image of what we understand to be male to be a man that i have been carrying and and that literally as a physical reaction to to and 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 a way to block emotions so that 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 certainly has been um a thing that that I've been dealing with for sure. Man, uh, I feel like you're speaking to my soul there. I <laughs> I felt similar, you know, very similar. Those that's definitely some a dynamic I I still am navigating to this day. Um, I guess for me, I felt like an outsider. So I felt like, well, I am a guy, <laughs> I am a man, but you're telling me I, I'm not based on some sort of criteria, right? Like I, mm-hmm. I felt excluded. So I kind of had to explore it on my own. I wasn't, I, I felt like I couldn't, I wasn't included in, in, in the image. So I rejected the whole thing. But now I'm trying to reconnect with that. So it's like, it still has to get healed, right? Or it still has to get looked into that, that what is that? archetype what is that and and still needs to be explored
prevalent thing. I'm so glad we're having this conversation because I'm very curious about it. I, I love to ask um, my friends about it. And um, actually, for me, this is it's been pretty nice to have these relationships because I was kind of. I wasn't as I was kind of denied them growing up and now as an adult, I'm able to revisit and explore this uh, male energy and 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 a friendly and positive way and and find out what what male friendships look and feel like uh not that i didn't have male friends but <laughs> um i did when i was growing up i didn't have a lot mm. um and it was i feel like a lot of it had to do with that pressure so um to look to for things to be a certain kind of way yeah. You get excluded. But, but as you become an adult, all those things aren't so focused on. So there's people are just kind of going to accept you like you're a person first. <laughs> I think I think that these the process eventually permeates everything. This process of setting the ego and setting uh, all these uh, negative beliefs that we have of ourselves uh when when that when when the sense of <clears throat> what we are becomes more uh, transparent the life and everything that has to do with life like relationships also follows suit on that <clears throat> on that uh path and for instance when when you have when you don't need to wear that front to to protect yourself yeah and to and to erect that that male distortive um archetype relationships and and people you attract people that um enjoy that kind of transparency that kind of uh lightness in you and um and that's the wonderful thing about about the path whatever whatever it is uh i find that it it life becomes a celebration in all its aspects because Everything becomes light, and um, and and don't you you just don't feel constricted, and that is deeply r resonated along uh, every little detail of your life. Oh yeah, big time, very very big time. Everything becomes lighter, um, and yeah, just like you said, shedding all of the all of the archetypes. Yeah, man, I. And not even just archetypes, all the ideas like the I think I think when you're growing up, you're doing a good job. You're being told, hey, we got to teach you a lot about this world in a little bit of time. So here's all the cool <laughs> stuff. And here's how to be a person. And this is society. And this is this is what you're supposed to be doing. And you're like learning all of these things hardcore. Um, and then you're believing them because you believe that everyone else is believing them to the extent that you're believing them. And so um you're like really opting into these these images about yourself and life and all this other stuff. And so I think that's part of the the growing up human experience. Um, I am often reminded of the caterpillar that we, we, we as humans, we come into the world like a little hungry caterpillar and we eat the world. And by eating it, I mean, we learn it. And then from what we eat, we create this little cocoon of logic and ideas and, and images and all this other stuff. And then we live in it now. The opportunity is to emerge from that so you, and, and, and be yourself, <laughs> uh, the one who has gone through all that and, and had all those ideas and, and understood them so and then now knows themselves. So that's, that's, the, that's the path, right? They're not, that's, what, that's what it feels like to me because before, before all, of the, all of the energy was tied up in, in the knowing of it and now... It's more about the being of it. And in that, um, I am connected with that which informed all of these ideas, that that which informed all of these pictures about what it should be. I'm, I'm, I'm more connected with that, and I'm getting to see it expressed. And then I get to see it expressed everywhere. And it's so cool, you know? No, it doesn't really matter how someone's being. You're just watching, like, wow, look, that's a perfect expression. You know, that they're, look at that, and look at it there, and look at it over here. Um, and then, well, if you're like me, you start really having fun because then you can start playing with the the male energy, and you can start to see male 
uh, you can start to see masculine archetypes, not people. You can see them more abstractly in nature. And then you can start to see it everywhere, and it's, it just becomes really fun. But that... <laughs> and and that, that points to the fluidity of... Uh, I don't want to say fluidity of gender because, you know, I, I really don't want to go there. <laughs> but um, the fluidity of of reality. Yes. That's fluid like that. Yes. And if we are reality, that fluidity is within us and goes beyond the the male and the female and uh, and transpires our own self-expression, which is a print, a, a unique print that each of us have. And that's that's the beauty of it. And I, I completely agree with what you just said. I, I think you're exploring it, I'm exploring it, and we're all here. At the It's so cool that we get to do that. Um, and and the, at this time, we're in, a, we're in such a great time right now where we can have these kinds of conversations and we can explore it the way that we're exploring it. And you can be halfway across the world. We would be so isolated. I would be in my own little corner over here, bubbling up these <laughs> little ideas. And, and, and I might not have, um, my environment might not be conducive to the way that I'm thinking. So I could be, I could feel isolated. And then I might, I might just do, give up my own exploration in favor of joining the, the, the collective around me so that I can fit in because that's survival. Um, and then those things die, those things within yeah. me die. So, but instead I'm connected and I, I am able to find, uh, other people who are, who are receiving on this, on the signals that I'm receiving, you know, the people who are interested and we can, you know, give voice and we can connect each other and then we can explore and we feel just as validated because we, we form our own consensus, which is, which is cool. And that's kind of that. That's out there for everybody. Yeah. And that's, yeah, that's what we are doing here. And I, I'm so glad to have these conversations because it, it's a rare thing. Let, let's admit it. You know, it's, it's not a, a subject that is, is talked about very, very often. And when it is, it has uh, a sort of, um, sort of s some rules, some inherent <laughs> yeah. and spoken rules that, that one must abide um by and uh i, f I feel what what we are having y you and me here is very precious in that sense there's there's not really anything bound or or there's not any rules that we can we sh we 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 follow it just um uh, sincer sincerity yeah. transpiring and and yeah i appreciate that very much same um unless you want to uh have another thought on this um, I guess we we can end this. I feel I feel we've we've tread great ground today. Um, <laughs> I love that. It's been. I'm, I'm really glad we talked about this. Yeah, me too. The good pick as usual. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you have a gift, my friend. Yeah, I'm good. I I feel complete for now. 